let it be known that I am forthright and I bear my soul to you assholes for the purposes of content and the purposes of being a, a an orator and um, and storyteller. All right. Let, let it let it be known that Kai spares no corner of his soul for you uh, for you fuckers. So <clears throat> I have been talking to this boy for a little while. Um he he checked all the boxes. He checked all of the boxes. All of them. Fits my sexual proclivities to a T. Fits my interests to a T. Right? You'll 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 hear more as this story goes on. But let me just front load this by saying uh, that it was he 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 checked all the fucking boxes. Gorgeous in the right age range like it, it, it worked it worked we clicked we clicked in a way that i didn't expect to click um so we've been going for a while behind the scenes and this weekend well it was supposed to be last weekend but for reasons that i will get into it got pushed to this weekend <clears throat> so he was going to spend the weekend with me and so I was excited, he was excited, we were quite looking forward to it. And so, a little backstory. Um, he is from Northwest China. He is not a native American citizen. He's not a naturalized American citizen. He is originally from Northwest China. Um, and he came over to uh, go to school. Um, he originally was going for civil engineering and then switched to software engineering because it was a better career choice um, at University of Arizona. Um, so not a party school like ASU. <laughs> ASU still has a rep. Um, and he um, he basically had a series of experiences that I need to explain context for, to explain this story, right? Um, sorry to him. I'm going to bear his soul, too. Um, but if I'm going to bear mine, I'm going to bear his, too, because he's, he's the other half of this story. Um, so while he was in school, he fell in love with this guy, and they got married. Um... Except the guy was a douchebag. The guy was a douchebag. Um, he didn't understand concepts such as a student's budget. He didn't understand concepts like a student's schedule. As in, why can't I buy all this stuff? Why aren't you ever around? Shit like that, okay? So it gets to the point of being emotionally abusive. And the guy goes off and cheats on him. Right? And... Then the guy I was interested in goes around and has a reaction to this and cheats on the husband, right? I don't consider it cheating because it's vengeance at that point, right? That's emotional, that's that's emotional vengeance. You're seeking revenge. I don't consider it cheating. But damage done. Because amidst all of this drama, he has the emotional load of the failed marriage. He has the emotional load of guilt from cheating himself. He sees that as, you know, he was disloyal. He, he, he still feels guilt. guilt. Um, and he almost flunked out of school while doing this. So, Chinese foreign exchange student education is a big fucking deal right like it's that's sort of it's that part of the world this is the sort of mentality right kaiser oof, yeah yeah he almost flunked out of college he managed to scrape by but the damage was done it 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 fucked him in the head it fucked him in the head pretty good now he left 
he got his degree, he left, and then he came back a couple of years later and he got bounced around from location to location, from uh, like company to company. And finally he got somebody to properly sponsor his H1B and that company is PayPal. Now, PayPal, um, well, not just PayPal, but the concept of working on an H-1B visa is a mental torture unto itself. I know most Americans look at H-1B visas like they're taking advantage of us, but we're taking advantage of them. And it is a nightmare hellscape to live under that hierarchy. Essentially, he is at the beck and call and the slave of that corporation, because if they fire him, we can just kick him out of the country. Right? Like it doesn't, if he builds a life here, right? At while he's here, that corporation has the power to just basically eject him to some degree or another. So it is super exploitative. It's super coercive and it's fucked beyond belief. Um, and so all of that past trauma, all of that fucking corporate trauma, all of that governmental trauma, Wither, you're not familiar with the H-1B visa program? Yeah, you're here because you got a job. You're sponsored by a corporation. That's how that works. It's not a fucking... That's how H-1B visas work. That's just... That corporation is just... That's how that works. Yeah. Um. So, while he was in school, he had health care. But after school, he didn't have health care. And between all of the corporations and the job changes and the moves, he basically didn't have access to health care. So when he came off of his health care, he abruptly stopped an SSRI. For those of you who know a little bit about psychopharmacology, you already know what abruptly stopping an SSR, uh, SSRI looks like. Um, so he did that as well. So let's just fast forward a ways. Um, so... I meet him, right? It's been a bunch of years. We click, we get to know each other. We're vibing. Um, fucking Viva. It depends what the company says about you from what I understand. There's variance on that. Um, we're vibing, we're getting along. Everything's fucking firing on all cylinders. It's working. It's working. It's working in a way that forced me to drop a couple walls. Because if I wanted this to work, I had to drop a couple walls. I had to let him in. I let him in at least a couple of the outside perimeter circles, right? Um, so you can you can you can go so far as to say Kai was getting attached a little bit. Um, so he finally gets here, and we're spending the weekend, and he's here Saturday, and we're. Let's just say, for the purposes of Twitch, we're exploring each other's bodies. We're getting to know one another. Uh, we're having fun. And all of a sudden, I can feel it. I'm not even looking at it. I can, I can feel it. Um, his hand is just on my leg. Like, the back of his hand is just sort of, like, stopped on my leg. And I just wait 30 45 seconds and then I just sort of flip over and I look at him and I'm like what's up and he just sort of like he does this sort of like little little shake and I'm like talk to me you gotta communicate you gotta talk what's up and this is when he starts describing the what he preferred to destroy uh, describe it as mental turbulence where he um, he is experiencing two minds and he essentially is dealing with the same sort of thing. If I had to give an analogy, a comparison that a lot of you would understand, um, he's what he's experiencing is underlying general anxiety disorder driven inability to self accept one's true self due to the socio normative values inflicted upon upon him by chinese and american culture right what 
we're getting into, the dynamic that we're in, he's fine with being gay. He's fine with being gay. That's 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 not an issue. It's the kink. No, no, no. Again, fucking y'all fucking jump to conclusions. Internalized homophobia. No, he's fine with being gay. He's not fine with being a kinky son of a bitch. He's a freak. He's a freak just like me. But society tells you that that's even less okay than being gay. Gay is fucking nothing. Dude, it's apparently nothing in Northwest China. I asked him about his parents and his society. He said, no, it's no big deal. It wasn't a, it's not a big deal. Like, it's not a big deal. Y'all fucking, yeah, y'all need to readjust some of your parameters, by the way. Having an interesting conversation with him about some of the, like, socio-normative values of, like, northern China. Yeah, it's not that homophobic, actually. China is, and some of the, uh, some of the metropolitan and some of the rural areas are. He said, but yeah, no, my family doesn't, my family doesn't care. Hey, there's that fucking hitch again. Jesus Christ. Um, fucking, could you not? I know it's DGen, but like, do you understand? I'm kind of bearing my soul a little bit. And then I like actually kind of gave a shit about this dude. Like, I, I just, you know, like, could you be a less douchey about it? Um, so... I start talking to him and understand, uh, yes, Kaiser, but I'm not going to fucking dox the kid. Um, we're not going to go that far. I'm not going to tell you specifically where he's from. I'm just going to tell you Northwest China. Um, so like, okay. All right. No big deal. Right? Like, let's, let's have a chat. Let's have a heart to heart. I, I understand the psychology of what's going on here. I understand what's what I'm dealing with, and I understand um, he, he he is adorable. Next word, he is adorable. He's fucking adorable. Um, there's no way around that. Um, but okay, all right. I can work with this, right? I can work with this. I know I know what's up, right? I understand the sort of um, self-inflicted self-hatred that um, the fetish and the queer scene goes through and the failure to adapt and the failure to normalize one's own actions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's something that's not talked about outside fetish circles very much. And even inside fetish circles very much. The fact that you feel like an outsider to society, that you feel wrong, you feel evil. And some of these words are his own descriptors, by the way, evil is one of the ones that he, he used to describe it. And so trying to normalize it, trying to come to like, you know, utilizing these sort of tactics of like, okay, have I ever made you feel like you can't trust me? No. You know, do you feel unsafe here? No. Do I seem like I'm evil? No. Do you actually think that like you're evil? No, not really. No. Okay. So like you've got other people's voices in your head. You've got other people's thoughts. You've got that sort of thing. What do your instincts tell you? What do you feel being here? What do you feel when you talk to me? What do you feel like those sorts of things, right? Trying to normalize the patterns for him. Um, and so we're, you know, I said, okay, so let's just reset. Let's take it easy. Right? And so I show him around the house, show him the dinner I made, show him the backyard, right? We're just, we're taking it easy at that point and slowing down and just, you know, resetting to zero sort of situation. And I eventually show him, uh, show him my bedroom. And for those of you that know me, getting access to my bedroom is not an easy task. Um, I was prepared to actually sleep in the same bed with this, uh, with this person. So, we lay down and we just start cuddling and making out a little bit, right? We just start doing what you do, right? He's a gay man. He's been married. This isn't weird or freaky. This isn't kinky. This is just two dudes making out, getting a little hot and heavy in bed. All right. This should be familiar enough ground for him. This isn't too out there. And we're going at it and he starts fucking grinding. Like he's on top of me. Right? He wants it. Okay. I look up at him and say, Do you do you want me to get the lube? And he says, No, I want to come with you. Okay. Cool. 
Um, so we get back to right about there. Because the lube, closest lube was in that bathroom, not the other bathroom. So we got about there. That's about as far as that went um, until we were at it again. Um, so we're going at it. <clears throat> and I'm beginning the process, as it were, right? You know, counting from one to two. Follow along, kids. You can do it. We're trying to skirt TOS here. So, thank you for the biddies. Um, so... We're, we're, we're doing what you do. And he decides he wants to take a hit of weed. He's got a vape pen with him. And at this point, I am super hesitant. And I'm like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, no, I, I, you know, I can handle it. I, you know, I smoke. I'm like, yeah, but given that you, you had an anxiety attack earlier and that you're already dealing with some stuff, are you sure you should be smoking weed? He's like, no, I'll, I'll be fine. I'm like, okay. He takes a fucking hit. We keep going at it. And no sooner that I am inside him um, I see the stare. Straight up middle distance. Straight up middle distance. This, this dude is like seeing a Vietnam flashback at that point. Straight up middle distance. I'm like, okay, time to back off. So I'm like, what's up? <clears throat> what's up? Talk to me, communicate. So he's having he's having trouble. It's turbulent again. So I pull him up. We're fucking, you know, face to face in each other's eyes. I said, give me a 10 scale. How bad is it? How bad is it right now? He goes, eight. And I'm like instantly oof. And he goes, No, it's a nine. I'm like, Jesus Christ. So Reset. Hop on the cat. Uh, hop on the the love seat over there. I'm like, let's just watch a movie, right? Let's chill. Let's relax. Fuck all this. Fuck all this. Let's just let's just watch a movie. Um. I asked him. I said, what do you want to watch? And he's like, I I don't I don't I don't care. Like, let's just you know. I'm like, okay. So I put on Neil Breen because we have a shared love of bad movies as well. He sorts his movies by ascending uh, ratings. So zero stars to five stars. That's how he, that's how he looks for movies is bad movies first. Um, I told you a lot of boxes ticked on this one. A lot of boxes ticked on this one. Um, so we're just sitting there and I'm talking to him and I'm like, okay, what can I do to make this dude more relaxed and comfortable? Right. There's a few things I offer to do um, to to qualify this. I offer to take the collar off of his neck or the um, <clears throat> piece of restraint equipment on his um, nether regions. Told you, ticked a lot of boxes. So he he turns that down. Um, he turns that down he said, no, no, I, you know, I'm like, well, how about we just like, how about we just, I don't know, like, why don't we throw some clothes on and go walk around the neighborhood? Like just normal, like a normal couple thing, right? Let's go up to the park, sit in the grass, relax, get some fresh air, right? Fresh air would do him some good, right? No, I, 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 I don't, I, I just, I just want to run. And I said, 
what do you mean run? He says, I just want, I just, I just want to get in my car and leave. And that's when he looks at me and goes, would you let me leave? I'm like, bruh, I'm not in the business of some Charlie Manson fucking cult shit, right? Like there's a power dynamic at play here, but I don't want you here if you don't want to be here, right? Like I'm not going to kidnap you, man. That's, that's not how this works. And so like, yeah, of course I'd let you go, but first let's talk, right? Let's, let's counsel. I said, I, I understand that you're like mid panic attack and that you're, you're doubting everything. I said, but it's like 10 at night. And if you want to run, if you want to drive back home, that's a five hour drive in the middle of the night back to Phoenix on desert highways with you having gotten very little sleep last night and having a day full of adrenaline and cortisol responses from your body. That's not a safe drive. So like I would counsel you not to undertake that drive. I said, how about we just get some food in you? I'm trying to shave the cannabis high off of him at this point. I'm like, why don't we get some food in you and we can just decide afterwards? He's like, oh, that food looked really good. I'm like, okay. So that my brain immediately goes to, all right, progress, right? He's interested in the food. Nope. The next statement following up the food really looked good was, I would just feel more guilty when I want to leave after eating it. Jesus Christ. So at this point, walls need to start coming back up. <clears throat> this is where this is where Kai needs to start getting his shit together. Because I can see this. I can see this. And I'm not gonna put up with this. I'm not, I'm I'm not gonna, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right? Like this is this is I've done my best. I'm not a fucking therapist. I'm not here to help you. And the fact that you sprung this baggage on me, like I knew about the husband, I knew about some of the shit, like I knew about the H1B, but the fact that he didn't have it reined in, I did not know about. So I'm like, all right, you know what? You wanna leave? I'm telling you it's probably not safe and you shouldn't do it, but fine, right? Let's get you kitted up, right? Let's get the gear off of you and let's get your shit packed up and I'll send you on your way, right? And on the way out, I made some statements. I told him, I said, look, the fact of the matter is that I had a dude in my 20s that strung me along for a very long time and was emotionally abusive as a result of this. And I said, and I have to let you know, I will not be strung along. You're either ready for something or you're not. I'm not going to wait for somebody. That's not something I do. I did that in my 20s and it ruined my, like, I don't know, from like 21 to, I don't know, 28 right? Like it just ruined my twenties, right? So I will not do that. I learned my lesson. I was emotionally abused. I was an idiot. I emotionally abused. I was an idiot. You know, he was an idiot. Like we, it just, I learned my fucking lessons. I fucking learned my lessons, right? You make mistakes that big, learn your fucking lesson. Don't make it again. If you start, keep making those mistakes, you're a fucking idiot and you need therapy at that point. Right. Like I learned from my lessons. So I, I told him, I said, this is the line in the sand. I said, I don't get strung along like this. I said, so I'm not telling you I won't keep the door open. I said, but the fact of the matter is, is that don't expect me to chase. I said, you need to sort this out. You need to get this done. And this isn't fair to other people, let alone me. This is just not fair that you're putting yourself out there while you're still carrying this baggage. You're not even carrying baggage, you're dragging it. I said, but you're you, while still carrying this baggage around. I said, the fact of the matter is, is that like, this just isn't fair what you're doing to people. So we, we, you know, go outside. We say our farewells and he leans in and gives me a kiss. And I just looked at him and said, you know, that kiss isn't fair to me. And I get him in his car, I wave him off, come back in, do what I do to cope. 
I hop on my computer. My computer has always been there for me. It has always, will always be. I start doing some computer work. I hop on voice chat. This is where Kat, I'm sorry, Karina enters the fray. I tell Karina an abbreviated version of this story. Kat joins the voice chat. It is now Karina and Kat and myself. So I tell the entire story to Karina and Kat at that point. And then we play um, Zomboid. Karina eventually passes out. Kat and I went into the early hours. During the early hours, I nearly finished my bottle of scotch. I have not drank in years. This this kid drove me to... I say, I say kid because he's younger than me, but he's in his 30s, for fuck's sake. Right? Like, uh, this this kid drove me to fucking drink, right? That's... that's That, that was... He drove me to fucking drink. Um... So the next day, I wanted to take Xanax, but I didn't want to deal with the hangover um, the next day. So I just, you know, I drank. Um, and then the next day, uh, well, the, uh, having discussions with Kat, um, because Kat is essentially my my ba- my backup save, right? Like Kat is my like early 20s save file. For those of you who don't know the lore surrounding Cat and myself, we consider each other temporally shifted versions of the same iteration within the Matrix. We're eerily similar in a lot of ways that y'all, a lot of you don't, don't even know about. Like it's creepy how we, how similar Cat and I, as far as like what I did in my twenties, ideologically, philosophically, life experiences, and how Cat like was just ticking boxes and like, oh yeah, I did that, I did that, and that I, I, yeah. We're really, really fucking similar in a lot of ways, despite being shifted by nearly 20 years. It's fucking weird as fu- as hell. 18, 17 years, something like that. It's really weird. And so I consider Kat my like, sort of like save file from my early 20s. And Kat just fucking drops it on me while we're talking. He's like, dude, this is why I don't bother. He said, I've just got different people for different reasons. And I'm like, good, stay that way. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. So we wrap up Zomboid 3 something, whatever, fucking, you know, eventually other people come through, fucking other people, like, I think Caboose swung through. We had other people in the line eventually. Um, And, like, other people played. But by the early a.m., you know, I'm fucking drunk. I'm high. I'm not drunk. I wasn't drunk. Dude, it's, it's true. I metabolize ethyl alcohol really effectively, despite having not drank in years. Um, But... We, um, I got to that point. I was like, okay. So I went and just like passed the fuck out after everything. Woke up the next day and just heeded my advice, right? I consider Kat to be a temporally shifted version of myself. I just heeded my advice. Um, or our advice, right? The cluster's advice. And I was like, yeah, you know what? Whatever. I was already over him. Like the truth of the matter is it would have been fun. It would have been really interesting. It would have been a, a... like this was one of those moments where my life would have gone one of two directions, right? It was truly just like, okay, I, you know, this or this, and I was prepared to go this way. Um, but due to external decision-making factors, I got shunted off the other direction. Okay. Um, it's just the way it works. So the next day I was fucking over it. Sorry. Once the walls are up, uh, once I'd make up my mind, it's a cold, ruthless place in my head sometimes. If I ever tell you you're dead to me, by the way, I mean, I mean it literally. Once I utter those words to somebody, you're dead to me. There's no coming back from that. Like, that's just the way it works. Um, so, like, yeah, the next day I just decided I'm like, okay, well, we're over that. Um, so what do we do? Um, we start the queue. Because I was looking at, like, one dude. Right? He could have, you know, but Kat's right. Fucking just get a bunch of people for different reasons. Um, nope. Cassidy. Um, fucking all y'all fucking zodiac astrology people. Are you this? No. Never lines up. Um, so I, um, the next day I just start the queue back up and I kept in touch with Kat the next day and we're laughing our asses off. I, I, here, here's, let me start and find this. Um, followed your advice, started the queue up. Nope, not that either. Followed your advice and started the queue up. Got three different dudes lined up for different purposes and needs. Took approximately three hours. Yes, that's a straight up brag. I literally just woke up and I'm like, uh, fucking 2 p.m., that sort of thing. And 
I'm like, all right, let's just like turn the cue back on. Um, and yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, I still need a pretty boy though, lacking in that area. Could use some eye candy. That one's always a toughie. And Kevin was like, well, it's Vegas. It shouldn't be too that. I'm like, yeah, but they're always boring sexually. And so this conversation takes place at 5:40 p.m. I state I still need a pretty boy. At 5:49, of 5:48, I send a ha 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 this long to Cat. And he, I'll send you a photo of what just sent me a message. He's like, what's up? Just the most gorgeous pretty boy. Just the most gorgeous pretty boy. Fucking hit me up. I'm like, and there's number four. Um, I got a fucking checklist, right? Like that's, it's, it's that fucking simple. Um, I don't have trouble if I, like, I just finding all of my needs in a single individual is extraordinarily difficult. And to find one is a thing that like, okay, right? So I was prepared. I was prepared to make some weird emotive sacrifices and shit like that and lifestyle changes and stuff like that. Like, okay, you gotta compromise. You gotta get in there and do that shit if you want that sort of deal. And I was prepared and that requires dropping some walls and fucking, you know, I got a little fucking injured in the process. But the truth of the matter is, is that it wasn't meant to be. And so I fucking just went back to square one, how Cat knows I operate, how I know I operate, um, how I know Cat operates and how Cat knows Cat operates, right? Like this is, this is how we, we do things. And it immediately pays out, right? When I was trying to do something that was against my instincts, that is against my traditional way of being, it fell apart. And the instant I went back to my natural state, literally the universe provides. So Sunday, Saturday was fucking miserable. Sunday, on the other hand, I have a list of like five dudes that like, well, I have a list of like six, maybe seven dudes that want something from me in one regard or another. I got four that I'm, I'm good with. Um, and then I just had some rando dude come over and blow me. That's, that was, that was my Sunday. I'm like, well, we're over that dude. I'll just get a random blow job from somebody. I'll line up four dudes who fulfill my needs and we'll go from there. Um, so that's, that, that is, that is that part of my weekend. So we'll, uh, 